All right, my name is Jason Clark. Um, I work here at New Relic. I work on the Ruby agent, uh, but that is not at all what I'm here to talk to you about today. Um, I want to talk to you about shoes. So those of you who have been around in the Ruby community for a while, or maybe just aware of it, uh, might know about a guy named Y. Uh, y the Lucky Stiff. He was kind of a quirky, enigmatic programmer that was prominent in Ruby several years back. And one of the major projects that he did was a GUI library called Shoes. This lets you write uh, GUI code, desktop applications, on Mac, Linux, and Windows. And the purpose behind this was a thing that he called Hackity Hack. It's kind of a programming environment for kids. It's meant to make uh, building little desktop applications and doing drawing and things really simple for people to get into. I don't know how well the colors on that are showing up, but this is a program that I wrote with my daughter, and it makes this beautiful face. You can do all sorts of drawing. There's all sorts of things that are kind of there in the box. And Ruby is a really great language for making that sort of simple and expressive for people to be able to start programming with. There are a lot of other things you can do with it as well. So there's you know game of life here. We've got buttons and sort of typical form elements and animations that can go on. You can build a calculator, anything that with you know text boxes and lists. Just basic UI primitives are very simple to stitch together. And coming from my background, I did a lot of C++ Windows development back in the day. Like this is the opposite of how doing UI development normally is. It's very accessible, very fun and easy. You can even do some basic animation. Um, like there's a tank game that's sort of 3D. You know, if you want to do real 3D, this probably isn't the place for you. But you can go a long way with what Shoes provides. But as many of us know, why disappeared? He left the internet. His code was still there, but you know, it was native C libraries for doing a lot of this UI stuff. <laughs> not the easiest thing to work with, not well tested. And as time went on, it got harder and harder for that to be maintained. Well, you might think that that was the end of the story, but it's not. So Shoes had gotten to a version 3, woo! And the people that picked it up afterwards had did a lot of experimentation with different ways to move it forward, make it something that Rubyists would really be able to engage with and continue to maintain. And Shoes 4 is the output of kind of that choice and where they went. So what it builds on actually is JRuby. So what this buys us is a lot of platform independence that we don't have to maintain ourselves. Java, the JVM, they've already done a great job of handling making UI libraries that work on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And so JRuby lets us integrate with those things and uh, keep things simple and keep it in Ruby where we can write this library. Now there's a pluggable back end, so there's lots of discussion about making something on Qt or making something on Opal or making all sorts of other GUI back ends. So if you hate JRuby, it doesn't mean that you can't get involved with shoes. Part of the reason that I'm up here talking to you about it though is that we've finally had the first preview release. This is the first time that Shoes has ever actually been available to install as a gem. The prior versions of it were like a binary installation. Now you can just do gem install Shoes minus minus pre and you will have it there. You need a working copy of JRuby and it's all ready to go. Once you've got that, you can just call Shoes in a file with shoes code in it like we demonstrated earlier. There's a bunch of examples up on the repo and you can start running programs. And I would love for everybody to go out and write some sort of sample application. Write some little thing that does a task that you've been needing or just play with it and report any issues that you find or you know, just chime in on the mailing list and let us know that you're looking at it because it's a huge motivation when we see people actually using the work that's being put out there. I'm also up here to talk about this because I think Shoes is a really great open source project for people to dabble in and to start getting involved. I had been intimidated for a long time about getting into open source. You know, some of these big projects, like, oh, it'd be fun to do something on Rails, but uh, there's no way I'm going to get a pull request in there. You know, it's, it can be hard to find a place to, to start. And Shoes is very open, it's a very small team, and there's lots of things from easy to hard that people can work on. So go out, take a look. There are things that we need just like making samples or renaming samples to be something that's more sensible. Testing things out and seeing if old samples still work. Comparing it to the old version and reporting bugs as you find them. There's lots of ways that you can get involved. And last but not least, the reason that I'm up here is because of this picture. So this is my father who taught me to program. 
having my daughter, Coraline, who's learned to program on shoes, show him how she wrote her program. Like, this picture is the reason that I'm involved in this project, and this is the reason that I think that this project matters. And so, thank you. I would love for everybody to get involved. Anybody who wants to talk to me, I've thought about maybe renting a hack session before one of the PDXRB meetups to be able to do that here and just I can show you the ropes, talk about it, help people get plugged in. So hit me up, shoes on. Thank you.